Hey guys, this is Michael Blackwell again. We're continuing on, or I should say we're wrapping up our study of the seven churches of Asia. We are now on the seventh church, um, the church at Laodicea, known as the Ecumenical Church in History. And it is found in Revelation chapter 3, uh, verses 14 to 22. So let's go ahead and read that together. Maybe we will. Maybe we won't. Let's see. There we go says there, and to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, these things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and, wh and white garments, that you may be clothed, that your shame may be, um, that, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. Verse 19, as many as I love, I rebuke and, haste and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. All right. The church at Laodicea is a church that is so deceptive, it is so lukewarm, that Jesus actually says that he's going to vomit it out of his mouth. That sounds really severe, right? So... This is probably not a church that you want to be a part of. Let me tell you a little bit about the city of Laodicea itself. Uh, the city of Laodicea was located about 40 miles southeast of Philadelphia. Um, Laodicea sat right in the middle of three major trade routes, so it was a real important financial and commercial center. Um, it had a huge stadium, it had theaters, lavish public baths, it had a medical university. So Basically, this was a real happening place. Um, if, it only had one problem, though, and the problem that it had, um, only being one problem, we wouldn't think it would be a big deal, but the problem they had was a big one, and that was Laodicea had no water. Uh, the water had to be piped in, and they piped in the water from the hot springs that were at the town of Herapolis, which was just a few miles away. And this water that they got from these hot springs, well, it was full of impurities. Uh, and as a result, it smelled really bad, and their water was always kind of lukewarm. And so it was not uncommon for a visitor that was visiting Laodicea, um, and he didn't know any better because he's a visitor, he would go and get a drink of water, and then they would immediately spit it out of their mouths because it tasted so bad and it was lukewarm. It was quite a shock to them. So Essentially, in Laodicea, their one big problem was it was impossible to get a good cold glass of water in their city, which is a pretty big problem. Now, we know from history that for a while, the church at Laodicea was actually very effective, and it had a great impact on the city. But we also know that around about 90 AD, the church had lost all of its effectiveness. So Jesus sends this letter kind of to shake the Laodiceans out of their self-sufficient uh, complacency, right? Um, uh, he, he's trying to encourage them to be willing to uh, have some self-sacrifice uh, so that they can reach some higher spiritual goals. So when Jesus says in verses 15 and 16, he says, I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish that you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of out of my mouth. Basically, what Jesus is saying here is he wants believers to be spiritually refreshing as cold water is, or even as hot water is, rather than being spiritually bland as lukewarm water is. He, he wants believers to be spiritually refreshing, okay? And, and, and that's the key. And, and, and the way that this usually happens, the way that we, um, we become lukewarm uh, water is um, basically story will go, a person uh, accepts Jesus Christ as their Savior, they're so excited that they're saved, old things uh, are passing away, all things are new, um, they're loving righteousness and they're hating sin, they're excited about reading their Bible, 
they're enthusiastic about prayer, uh, they're in love with their new church family, it's all good, it's great, they can't stop witnessing for the Lord, but then something happens. Uh, they start getting complacent. They start saying, well, who needs to go to church every week? And do we really need to read our Bible every day? I, I'm, I'm busy. I've got things to do. I mean, let's not be legalistic here, right? And that's kind of the attitude that people start to get. And before you know it, your spiritual temperature has cooled down right down to being lukewarm, right? Um, or got hotter to lukewarm. If it was really hot, it would get cooled down. But anyway, you get my point. And, and, and so here, here's what I'm trying to get across to you is if we stay in this lukewarm state, what does Jesus say he's going to do? Well, he says he's going to spit us out of his mouth. You see, it, it, it's not one of those things where Jesus just kind of sits back and says, well, you know, that's too bad. I'll just kind of wait until they come back around. No, Jesus says, if you stay in this condition, I will spew you out of my mouth. Well, he's not saying that you're going to lose your salvation, but what he's saying is he, he's going to do something that's going to get your attention. Um, the people at Laodicea, they knew exactly what Jesus meant here. And so here's what we need to do about this. Um, it's all the way down in verse 19. I love it. You know, when, when Jesus tells us not to do something, he doesn't just tell you not to do something. He tells you what to do in its place. And here in verse 19, he tells us what to do. He tells us to um, be zealous and to repent. In other words, you need to do something about it. You need to get back to your first love. You, you need to get back to where God is first in your priorities again, right? Okay, well, let's read verses 20 and 21. It says there, the famous verse, right? It says there, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on the throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. So, again, this is absolutely amazing, right? I mean, it just shows you the love of God. Jesus doesn't write them off. Jesus doesn't rain down fire from heaven in judgment. No, no. Out of his love, he patiently waits outside, and he knocks on the door of the church, hoping that they will open the door and let him back in again. You know, and right now, all around the world, Jesus is standing outside of the door of so many churches. And he's knocking. And he's saying, hey, it's Sunday. You're all inside. Um, would you let me in so that I can have fellowship with you? But the sad fact of the matter is, in a lot of these churches, his knock is going to go unheeded. And how sad is that? And so my question is, what about you? Is Jesus knocking on the door? Is he saying, hey, are you going to let me be a part of your life again? Or are you too busy being selfish and living your life for yourself? Well, let's take a look at our priorities. Let's not lose our first love. Let's not lose our passion for the things of God. Uh, let's put him first in our lives so that we can glorify him. And Well, that's the, that's the seven churches of Asia. A, a very brief overview, I, I grant you that. Um, and that is the church at Laodicea. I hope you've enjoyed this study. Um, I've enjoyed sharing it with you, and um, I just pray the Lord will bless you wherever you are. Thanks.